so in particular, this work is relating to um, looking at fine tuning and outer distribution, especially specifically looking at different fine tuning techniques and how they act within an outer distribution setting. Uh, and specifically, we're also kind of looking at how we can apply model reprogramming techniques to fine tuning as well. Uh, so uh, why do we care about robustness? So robustness is really important. Uh, it's one of the foundations of machine learning and you need robustness in order to gauge how well your model performs in a online environment. Uh, so essentially, if you do not have a strong robust system uh, within, within your ML model, you might see difference between your training uh, and your testing environment. And so an example of this would be, let's say the most classical example is you train your model with OFPRIS on the training set and on the testing set, you see a significant degradation. So robustness is really important. Uh, the thing with the robustness is there's so many different aspects to robustness. Um, so some of the more classical examples and there's more, but we give four examples here. Uh, so the most classical setting is in distribution generalization. So this is, uh, you have a model that you've trained and now you have a testing environment that you're testing your model towards. Um, and also you have OD generalization, which is another form of robustness. In this case, you have a trained model and now you're generalizing uh, with your in distribution sample. So an example is, uh, let's say you have ImageNet as your training in distribution. Uh, but now you're testing on sketch versions of the image uh, of the image net samples. Um, uh, another aspect of robustness is OOD detection. So this is the more extreme version of OOD generalization. In OOD generalization, you have essentially distributional shifts that are covariant shifts. So uh, although the semantic meaning of the, the context is the same as the indistributed data. So cats and dogs and sketch versions of cats and dogs. OD detection cares more about the semantic meaning of the input sample has been completely shifted. So this case would be like, hey, you trained a classifier on cats and dogs, but now what you observe in the environment is cars. And what you want to observe for your model is that you want it to be robust and safe uh, towards these completely semantically shifted OD samples. And you don't want it to overclassify a car with very high accuracy, uh, confidence that it is a cat, for example. Uh, of course, there's also adversarial robustness. So adversarial robustness is the traditional setting where you have some adversary and they're trying to uh, create some type of perturbation on top of your image to get it to misclassify in a setting. Uh, so in, in this talk, we'll mostly be focused on the OOD side of it and the uh, distributional side of it. So natural distributional shifts, we're gonna assume there is no uh, there's no bad actors and bad agents. So there was a paper uh, recently uh, published by Piercy Long's group that was the heavy inspiration for this work. Uh, they essentially were looking at the case of fine tuning pre-trained models, uh, models such as CLIP, which is a multimodal model that we'll get into a little bit. Uh, and they were looking at different fine tuning techniques and seeing how they perform in the outer distribution setting. Um, now, why is this important? Why are we looking at foundational models? Uh, so CLIP in particular is really important because it's the, is the basis for a lot of these um, recent large language models that you've been seeing with generative AI. So an example here would be, uh, this is stable diffusion. So stable diffusion uses the embeddings of the CLIP's text encoder. And so you want essentially CLIP to be as strong and the use cases of these types of multimodal models are really extensive. So. Um, so going back into Piercy's work a little bit, uh, essentially what they found is that uh, different fine tuning techniques, very classical fine tuning techniques, such as linear probing and full fine tuning, uh, they, they act differently uh, in an OOD context. So full fine tuning in particular degrades the model significantly. Uh, and, and they explain in their work that the degradation is caused mostly because of uh, like distortions to the pre-training parameter. And what that happens is you have such a good pre-trained CLIP multimodal model that has trained on such a diverse data set. And when you fine tune it, you essentially overfit uh, that, that pre-trained model towards a downstream task and you lose a lot of the generalization capabilities of that model. Um, and so there, there's a lot of questions that came as a subsequence for this work. Uh, so one of the big questions that we want to answer in our work is how far does this degradation extend? So in Piercy's work, they show that it extends to covariant shifts. What we care about to see is, does this extend to semantic shifts as well? So how far does the degradation go? Does it degrade everything that's not in distribution? Uh, and the other question that we were looking at is, there's this cool intuition in Piercy's work that uh, like 
less intrusive uh, fine tuning techniques are going to result in more robust uh, downstream models. And we wanted to see if there was alternative techniques for for fine tuning models as less intrusive, and maybe we show similar robustness uh, benefits. And so. Uh, as a subsequent result of that, uh, there's this subdomain, this uh, other domain for transfer learning called model reprogramming. Uh, and the best way to explain model reprogramming is through the lens of adversarial robustness. So in an adversarial robustness context, you have perturbations that you act on top of your input. And you essentially try to trick the classifier into classifying uh, a cat into uh, a dog. Uh, and you do this by making these uh, human imperceptible perturbations on top of the image. And the trick with model reprogramming is we take that perturbation, but instead of making it a bad actor, we want to leverage those perturbations and then repurpose the model for a different task. So an example of this would be you train a sci-fi model and it does very well on sci-fi 10 tasks, uh, but now you want to repurpose this sci-fi 10 model to work in an MNIST contest. And so you can use this perturbation trick with adversarial uh, robustness and essentially perturb all the images of MNIST so that they map directly to an image of Cypher. And so now you have essentially a reusable model that can work on MNIST with some perturbation uh, that, that is used from adversarial robustness. Okay, and so we, we know this trick with model reprogramming, but that kind of delves into another question that we didn't really, we needed to find and we needed to, to solve, which is, um, can you use model reprogramming techniques even to fine tune like clip type models? Because this, this was unclear uh, if we can utilize the, these types of model reprogramming techniques for clip like models. Um, and so that's what we essentially uh, built is this reprogrammer technique, which takes uh, a lot of the standard reprogramming functions that are used within model reprogramming. So these are the two uh, different modalities of reprogrammer. Uh, functions that we use. The first one is image reprogramming, and you can recognize by the perturbations on the edges that that is very similar to adversarial uh, uh, attacks and perturbations. And on the bottom is also a classic model reprogramming technique that's used in the text modality setting. Uh, and so we combine these two uh, in the clip natural setting, and, and we learn essentially these, uh, these types of reprogramming functions by keeping the clip encoders completely fixed uh, and we backpropagate towards these learnable functions. Uh, and the most important thing about these functions uh, is these functions are actually fixed with respect to each individual input. So regardless if you're getting a cat or a dog image, uh, the perturbation maintains the same. So in essence, you're learning a, a very small mapping that goes on top of your input. And all you have to do during, after fine tuning is just apply these types of mappings to your input and then you, you'll be able to get this uh, like fine-tuned results. And so uh, what is our experiment? So uh, we, we built this methodology and now we want to experiment it. Uh, the tricky thing about this experiment is that we have three tasks essentially. So we have the in-distribution task. So we fine-tune to image, uh, ImageNet and SciFar. Um, but we also have two more other tasks, which are OD generalization. So this is the case of some uh, covariance shifted SciFar and covariance shifted ImageNet. And we have uh, essentially two and four uh, data sets there. And we have OED detection. So this is semantic shifts away from SciFar 10 and ImageNet. Uh, and those are also standard within the OED detection literature. Uh, and now we just evaluate these methodologies uh, and with, with, our, um, with our method. Um, and so uh, going back to some of our initial questions. So the first question that we have is, does the degradation that's seen uh, and well-known uh, also extend to out of distribution detection. So does it extend beyond the context of covariance shifts into more extreme semantic shifts? A and the answer is yes. Um, so when you naively fine tune a model and this, this pre-trained model was pre-trained very well and has very strong generalization capabilities, when you naively fine tune it and you destroy some of its parameters and you overfit the model, uh, not only do you lose uh, covariance shift information that's generalizable, but you also lose essentially all other information that is not in distribution. And, and we show it here, uh, full fine tuning in particular is the one that Piercy's group uh, showed in their original work that was very detrimental to the downstream task. And, and we see it similarly with out of distribution detection. Uh, where semantically shifted samples are also uh, hurt a lot by fine-tuning. 
Um, and so that's one interesting thing we observed. Um, the other thing that we observed was a lot of these traditional fine tuning techniques uh, extending beyond linear probing and full fine tuning uh, also had uh, trade-offs and costs with each of the associated fine tuning techniques. And what I mean by that is uh, you have certain techniques which are very strong for detection or you have certain uh, fine tuning techniques which are very strong for in distribution accuracy, but may fail at OD generalization. And similarly, you might have a method that's very strong in OD generalization, but you fail at the other two tasks. And so what this beckons and what this says is that to some extent, um, your downstream task when you're fine tuning one of these models is very important. And if you're in a very sensitive space, like self-driving, for example, where you care about the, the occurrence of natural distributional shifts, uh, then, then it might be wise to consider like fine tuning techniques that are more robust to OOD. Uh, but if you're in an environment where you're guaranteed to see all Cypher 10 images, and you're very confident that these are not semantic shifted, uh, you're, you should be fine with using one of the more extreme fine tuning techniques that change the whole entire model parameter. And so those are some uh, some of our key takeaways. Uh, and so what are kind of the full empirical results? So here are some uh, general general uh, results that we had with in distribution and OD generalization. Um, so I'm gonna kind of skip over this and then go directly to the whole holistic results. So what this holistic result is looking at uh, in particular is we're looking at uh, the general averaged result of the methodology, uh, the fine-tuned methodology, and we see whether or not our method and other methods, how they can perform with respect to out of distribution, in distribution, detection, and generalization. Um, now, one, one thing to note in this, in this uh, table is that, um, just to clarify, it, the, the performance improvement for reprogrammer, although it's very strong holistically, does not imply that individual tasks, it is the superior version. And so what I mean by that is, uh, for example, for in-distribution accuracy, if you solely care about in-distribution and do not care about out-of-distribution performance, uh, there, there are better methods uh, out there for specific in-distribution tasks. But if you do care about OOD uh, generalization and detection, uh, then this, this would be a, a solid method. And so kind of to summarize uh, just the key takeaways from our work. Um, so. One of the key takeaways uh, I would say is naive fine tuning is very detrimental towards the, the general generalization capabilities of a pre-trained model. And so if you have one of these really strong CLIP multimodal pre-trained models, and you know that it has incredible OOD detection capabilities, which is uh, which it does have very strong, even zero shot OOD detection capabilities, uh, when you're when you're fine tuning it, you're bound to lose some degree of this generalization ability. And depending on the task, you should be careful about what specific fine tuning methods you use. The, the other thing, the other big takeaway is uh, reprogrammer is indeed a pretty strong fine tuning technique, uh, and you can utilize it in multiple contexts beyond a single modality, and you can utilize it in this multimodal clip setting. Um, and, and one of the last kind of key takeaways is. Uh, when you're selecting a fine tuning technique, be aware about what your downstream task is, be aware of what your environment is. Uh, and when you're deploying uh, like one of these fine tuned models, uh, just be aware whether or not you care about uh, naturally occurring distribution shifts. And so, thank you guys so much.